There's lots of changes coming to Royal Caribbean in 2024. Heck, it might even be the biggest year ever for Royal Caribbean. Let's talk about the big changes coming up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from Royal Caribbean Blog. Dot com. There's a lot coming to Royal Caribbean in 2024. So much. And I wanted to talk about some of these big changes that you can look forward to in the 2024 cruise. Not too late to book one after all. So let's talk about them. Starting with number one, Icon of the Seas. Man, I could spend this entire video just talking about Icon of the Seas. But Royal Caribbean's new cruise ship in 2024 will be Icon of the Seas. She'll be launching in late January. I expect preview sailings and short glimpses in early January, but by the time we get to the end of January, Icon of the Seas will be in service offering seven night cruises out of Miami. Now, the reason why Icon of the Seas is a big deal in case you've been living under a rock is because it's a brand new cruise ship and the first of a class. So this isn't like another Oasis class or another Quantic class ship. This is a whole different class of cruise ship. And that means there's new innovations, new features, and basically it's a big deal because Royal Caribbean designed this ship from the ground up. It's not a continuation necessarily of other ships, although it does borrow some features and best ofs from other ships. That's always been the tradition of Royal Caribbean to do so. But again, it's a brand new class. We haven't seen a brand new class of cruise ship from Royal Caribbean since 2014. So it has been a long time. By the way, that was Quantum of the Seas for those of you keeping score at home. At 250,600 tons, the much awaited new vessel is going to be the biggest cruise ship in the world. She'll be about 6% larger than the current biggest ship in the world, which is Wonder of the Seas. Icon of the Seas will be able to hold up to 7,600 passengers, which is a new record for a passenger ship. And then you add in the 2,350 crew members and you have almost 10,000 people on board, which is, yes, a new all-time record for a cruise ship. Icon of the Seas has 18 passenger decks, which is two more than Wonder of the Seas. And it's also a little bit longer than Wonder of the Seas. One of the many changes you'll find in Icon of the Seas versus other Royal Caribbean cruise ships is the focus on families. Icon of the Seas was built with a lot more cabins that have plenty of extra space to accommodate families with kids. Plus, it also has more amenities geared towards those families, including the new neighborhood called Surfside, which is dedicated to families with young children. Surfside features splash areas for babies and kids, pools and lounge spaces for parents, family-friendly eateries and shops, and a bar with mommy and me matching mocktails for the kids and, of course, cocktails for the grown-ups. Icon of the Seas also has the largest water park ever built on a cruise ship with six water slides in there. In all, you're going to have eight neighborhoods on Icon of the Seas, and just like the Oasis-class ships, these neighborhoods have distinct feel -sums. It's meant also easier to navigate the ship and, of course, be able to quickly find specific activities. Icon of the Seas will be the first of the Icon class of cruise ships with two more on orders. Doesn't mean Royal Caribbean can't order more, but as of right now, you'll have Star of the Seas coming out next year and then an unnamed third Icon class cruise ship beyond that. The number two change is another new cruise ship joining the fleet in 2024, Utopia of the Seas. The last, probably, in the class of Oasis class cruise ships will debut in July of 2024. Similar to Wonder of the Seas and the other Oasis class cruise ships that have come out before, Utopia of the Seas is going to be a continuation of that, the seventh in the Oasis class ship. But there's a twist with Utopia of the Seas in that she's going to operate three and four night cruises to the Bahamas from Port Canaveral instead of doing seven night cruises to start off. So Icon of the Seas, bringing a brand new cruise ship, will start off with seven night cruises. Pretty much every Royal Caribbean cruise ship that has entered service being brand new has always started with seven night sailings. It's a far more lucrative market. And then the older ships would do the shore sailings. But Royal Caribbean is flipping the script a little bit. They want to put Utopia of the Seas doing short sailings because they really want Utopia to appeal to the short cruise market, especially new cruisers. People have never cruised before and are hesitant to go on a seven night cruise. You know, when I talk about what cruise you should pick for your very first cruise, I often tell people all the time, seven night sailing. So there's a good blend of sea days and port days. But a lot of people that are new to cruise, have never been on a cruise ship before, are a little leery of all that. And so they tend to book short sailings. So by offering Royal Caribbean's brand new cruise ship, offering three and four night cruises, and of course having Icon of the Seas backing that up with seven night cruises, you've got an amazing one-two punch that Royal Caribbean really thinks is going to resonate with the cruise market. Utopia of the Seas will measure 236,860 tons, making it just a little bit bigger than Wonder of the Seas. And that would, of course, make it the second biggest cruise ship in the world, following, of course, Icon of the Seas. 
Like all Oasis class cruise ships, Utopia of the Seas has three separate pool areas, Kitty Splash Zone, Surf Simulator, Miniature Golf Course, Basketball Course, and even a zip line. And that's, of course, just what's out on the top decks. Then, of course, you have Broadway style shows, casino, spas, and showrooms. We don't know yet all the details about Utopia of the Seas, especially compared to Icon of the Seas. But as 2024 rolls on and some of the focus starts to move towards the summer, you're going to see a lot more information coming out about Utopia of the Seas. We do know a few changes that are worth mentioning. Number one, the pool deck areas are going to be completely revamped with lime and coconut bars, as well, of course, as having the signature Perfect Storm Water Park and Splash Away Bay Kitty Zone. There's also going to be a two deck high Giovanni's Italian Kitchen and Wine Bar. That's a different location, of course, than we've previously found on Wonder of the Seas. It'll be overlooking the boardwalk and have a new outside terrace area called Geo's Terraza. There's going to be Izumi in a new location as well. Izumi moves to Central Park on Utopia of the Seas, and it'll feature a walk up window for sushi and Japanese inspired sweets called Izumi in the Park, as well as a bigger area for teppanyaki dining. And then there's going to be a new restaurant and concept on Utopia of the Seas that is designed to be an immersive experience that makes guests think it's going to be like on a train. It'll involve technology, multiple courses, different destinations, and storylines. And the idea is that it engages all the senses. You're going to feel like you're on a train that's moving, but you're actually eating, of course, in a restaurant on a cruise ship. More on that later on. And then, of course, there'll be a new tiki bar in the Royal Promenade. That'll be the Pesky Parrot, and it'll serve fruit-based cocktails alongside frozen drinks. Again, we can probably expect a little more details, especially like shows and other facts about what's going to be on Utopia of the Seas closer to her launch. Something else that'll be opening in 2023 will be the new adults-only area at Perfect Day at Coco Key. Hideaway Beach is the name of this new beach expansion that can accommodate between 1,500 and 2,000 guests. It will open right around the time Icon of the Seas visits there for her maiden voyage, so figure right around the end of January. And then it'll be an extra cost area for guests that are 18 years old or older in order to go in there. You have the choice of paying an admission fee to get in there, or you can purchase a cabana, which then includes admission fee to get in there. The cost of admission really varies from sailing to sailing. Royal Caribbean uses dynamic pricing for it, so you'll probably spend somewhere in the ballpark of, I'm gonna say on the low end, $30 per person, all the way up to about $70 per person. Again, it depends on the sailing that you choose. Once inside Hideaway Beach, you'll have a choice of a large temperature control freshwater pool, semi-circle beach, and reserved cabana area. They'll be complimentary in water hammocks, resort style loungers, and umbrellas to keep you in the shade. And of course, there'll be DJ music provided in the pool area as well. Also included are seven bars, including a beach bar in a new venue known as On the Rocks. On the Rocks is an al fresco bar that's located on the rocky shore that serves up live music, TV to watch live sports, games like pools and shuffleboard, and memorable ocean views refreshing drinks like frozen margaritas and Mai Tai. So there'll be actually a sports bar for the first time at Coco Key. You also have a new pizza restaurant that's included with your admission into Hideaway Beach, which is Slice of Paradise, get it? And then also Snack Shack and Hideaway Bar. And there's gonna be plenty of places to kind of relax and enjoy your time at Hideaway Beach. So again, this is a new adults only area opening at the end of January, early February of 2024. Something else you can look forward to in 2024 that is long overdue is Royal Caribbean will start allowing you at some point in the year to pre-book reservations at specialty restaurants if you bought a dining package. Now, up until now, guests that booked the dining package had to wait until they got on board the ship to make a reservation, and that created a pain point for them. So Royal Caribbean wants to change that, and they announced that'll change at some point in 2024 because instead, you'll be able to book reservations pre-cruise for specialty restaurants if you have a dining package. Royal Caribbean didn't say exactly when this change will happen, other than the idea that they're going to probably aim to get it in the first half of 2024 after the launch of Icon of the Seas. And according to Royal Caribbean, sometime in the first half of 2024 is, quote, likely, end quote. What this really means is keep an eye on it. Nothing's changing yet. But at some point in the year, hopefully, by the time we get to a year from now, everybody will be able to pre-book their reservations if you have a dining package rather than waiting to get on board the ship, which is going to be such a big game changer. And lastly, there are a few itinerary changes worth noting, things that are different or unique about cruises in 2024. Royal Caribbean visits places all around the world, but I've picked out three different itineraries, three different changes that are new for the first time ever, starting off with Symphony of the Seas. Symphony of the Seas will be making its New York City debut when it calls Cape Liberty home in Bayonne, New Jersey. Now, Royal Caribbean has already offered cruises on Oasis class ships with Oasis of the Seas out of New York, but for the first time, Symphony of the Seas will be over there. And then number two, 
Speaking of Oasis class ships, the aforementioned Oasis of the Seas will head to Europe for the first time since her amplification. So this is not the first time Oasis has sailed in Europe, but it is the first time that Oasis of the Seas has sailed in Europe after being upgraded. So you can go on a Mediterranean cruise, a seven night Spain, France, and Italy sailing from either Barcelona or Rome and visit places all around the Mediterranean on the upgraded Oasis of the Seas. And lastly, you'll have more weekend sailings than ever from Australia with the upcoming 2024, 2025 cruise season offering more three and four and short cruises than ever before in that region. So there you have a look at the things that'll be different in 2024 on Royal Caribbean. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what to expect, maybe make some new plans or just simply get more excited for the cruises you already have booked. Let me know in the comments below, what are you most excited for in 2024 for your Royal Caribbean cruises? What is really standing out to you as a major change? Let me know down there below in the comments. While you're below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.